What's going on guys, it's Tisera here. And today we're going to talk about network attached storage. Are you a content creator or a small business owner that wants to put all your data into one location and be able to access it anywhere you have internet? Or someone just like me that has multiple hard drives all over the house and just wants to consolidate it into a single storage and be able to access it online anywhere in the world but not have to pay a subscription fee well i found just the thing it is a synology network attached storage this particular one is the synology ds220 plus so what exactly is a NAS device well essentially it's a device that takes a hard drive and it plugs into the internet and you're able to access it anywhere you have internet capabilities Think of it as your own little cloud storage at home or at your office. So without further ado, let's uh, open this bad boy up and I'll go over how to install the hard drive and also to set it up on your PC. So this thing is compact yet pretty powerful. So let's take a look in the front. We have the status indicator lights, USB and the power on and off button. And this USB is for quick data transfer. Flipping it around, you will find a gigabit ethernet port and USB 3.0 port as well. Inside of this thing has a quad core processor to keep everything running nice and smooth. So it does not come with a hard disk or a hard drive. What I recommend is get the ones that are especially made for NAS devices. I mean, you're gonna pay a little bit more but they're better because it's going to last longer. Uh, I went ahead and picked up the Western Digital one terabyte SSD for now. Even though this has two slots built into it, um, well, for now, I'm only going to put this one hard drive. Opening it, it's fairly simple. The front panel, you just pop it open. You got the two disk drives that when you push it, the trays come out. And the idea behind this is you would slide in your hard drive, screw these sides on, and then you're able to slide it back in. However, since I have the SSDs, these don't really fit in these slots. So you're just gonna have to line up the pins with the inside connector. So you can see it's in there pretty snug. And now all you have to do is slide this thing back in. And put the front panel on. And we will connect this to the power and plug it in and hop on over to the computer and to show you the rest of the steps. Before we get started, I just want to share something real quick. If any of you guys are in the same situation as me, where I'll be putting my Synology NAS. I do not have capabilities to run a wire. Uh, my Wi-Fi router is located downstairs. So what I've done is purchase this TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi extender. Uh, it's fairly simple. Once you set it up, you just plug in your ethernet cable to the extender and to the back of your Synology NAS, and then just go ahead and power on the device. All right, let's hop onto the PC and configure this thing. All right, we're at our computer and ready to set up the NAS device. Uh, first thing you wanna do is go down to your network settings and make sure that it is connected to the same network as the NAS device. Once you've done that, you're gonna go to find.synology.com and if, as long as your NAS device is connected to the same network, it should come up on this screen. All right, so here we have our DS220 Plus that it recognized through the find.synology.com. And uh, you can see your IP address, your MAC address, everything looks good here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit connect. It's gonna prompt you with the Synology end user license agreement. Uh, you're gonna read this and click I agree, hit next, continue. The device is now ready to install and for you to configure. So here it's asking me, do I want to automatically download and install the latest DSM uh, 
software. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the automatically download option here, make things a little bit easier. And it'll give you a prompt saying old data will be deleted. I understand that all data on these drives will be deleted since I have nothing saved to the SSD that's attached to my NAS. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. This can take a few minutes. All right, it's done doing its thing. So we're gonna go ahead and click start. From here, you know, you just have to give it a device name administrator account name, password, and just the basics. So I'm gonna go ahead and call mine DS220. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that, DS220. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do the auto, uh, the suggestion here, the automatically install important DSM and package updates. Uh, I'm gonna stick with that one and click next. This step is pretty important. So here it's asking if you want to create a Synology account. I definitely want to do that. This will allow me to access my NAS pretty much anywhere in the world remotely. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I accidentally almost clicked no. Uh, I'm going to hit create now. Here it has given you the web browser link. So if you want to go ahead and copy this and save it somewhere safe. Once everything's set up, this is what the background or the desktop of DSM software looks like. Uh, it's gonna give you a couple of the prompts. So one of them is to set up two-factor authentication, which I highly recommend. But for now, I'm gonna hit remind me later. I'm gonna be doing that later on. And um, you, you can opt in to take the quick tour up here. I'm gonna... I'm going to close that one out. First thing you need to do is create a storage pool. Basically, you need to tell the SSD or the hard drive that's in the NAS device what to do. We're going to hit after you hit create, it's going to bring you up to this screen. Um, basically, it's going to explain before data can be stored on your NAS, please create at least one volume and a pool through the aggregate. All right, so hit start. And here you want to select the right type. Now, I'm not too technically knowledgeable on this, but there is a great rate calculator through the Synology website. You can Google Synology rate calculator and there you can go in, uh, you can click on the first link that comes up through Google and put in how many hard drives you have and figure out the rate configuration. Uh, since I only have one SSD or one hard drive in there, I'm basically going to have to do rate zero or uh, the SHR. All right, so here I found my SSD. It's a one terabyte. Uh, you do lose a little bit of uh, storage, you know, about 700 megabytes, it seems like. Probably for the software. Click on it, click next. You can do a drive check here if you like. Drive check may take, uh, performing a drive check can automatically reconfigure a drive, thereby reducing the risk of data access errors. I'm gonna skip this for now, hit next. I'm gonna hit max. Pretty much allocate all available uh, memory. Here I'm gonna go with the recommended, the BTRSF file system. Uh, I'm not really sure the, the difference. Um, Typically, in the past, I've gone with the recommended and have ha, didn't have any problems with it. All right, so you're just gonna read these. It, it does a, um, the setup guide does a really good job at explaining what you need to do and what option you need to choose. And it does a good job at recommending what they think that you should be doing. So I would just follow the, the setup wizard. All right, everything's pretty much done. As you can see, this is uh, asking me to confirm all the settings that I've chose through the setup wizard. Looks good, so I'm gonna hit apply. So all the data on the newly added drive will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. All right, it created the storage pool. And here, it's gonna give you a little window. You can actually make this bigger and add more widgets into it. It's showing that my NAS is working properly. It's healthy. 
Um, this is the, the CPU. Yeah, everything seems pretty good. All right, so we're gonna minimize this guy. All right, so once everything's set up and good to go, uh, I would recommend download like the Synology app. For example, the Synology Photos is a great app to be able to manage all your photos and your media. And also you can download these apps through the package center. You can go here and click agree to the user agreement. And there's a bunch of apps in here you can download, mess around and um, take the full advantage of your home network assisted storage. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is how to be able to set up like a shared folder uh, through the Synology and be able to drag and drop any kind of files to your Synology right from your desktop. So the way you do that is go to the file station. You're gonna to wanna to create a new folder. Um, I'll just call this work, work stuff, work documents, hit okay. So I created the work documents there. Click, you can exit out of this. So here we can go to our, our network folder. And if everything's set up correctly, you should see your DS220. Uh, depending on what you name it, it might have a different uh, title. So you wanna click on it. It's gonna open up all the documents that are within the NAS. So if you go to documents, uh, that's where I created the work documents. You can literally just drag and drop this and it'll save to your cloud network or your NAS. You can double check by going in here, work documents, and now you can see the document is there. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to leave a comment and a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.